today I have a special treat. I bought a really great deal on a 1940s catalog on eBay and I just got it here so I can't wait to unbox it and show you what's inside. This one is from 1943 so it should be pretty fun to look through. It was a World War II so if you don't know World War II history uh, we entered in 1941 in the United States so the clothes inside are going to show all sorts of interesting fashions that were available during the rationing, fabric rationing. So fabric rationing was in place to, uh, so that you could make a dress from a small amount of fabric so that you could conserve fabric for the war effort. This is super exciting. I have very few pattern catalogs at all. Let's open it up and see what's inside. This is from February 1943, and the fashions inside would be what someone would make and wear at Homefront America. It shows a really interesting way of looking at dress history because it shows what a woman would be making at home during the wartime effort. There are different ways that you could use different fabrics. There are different ways that you would cut things to make it smaller, and all of the fashions that would be in here would have to meet the wartime economy standards of using a certain amount of fabric. So in this video, I'm going to show you almost the entire catalog from 1943, and you'll be able to see what people wore in wartime in America, especially women that were sewing at home, the make, do, and mend look. On the inside here, there's an index, and it talks about the type of garments that you would have in here, and also how to determine your size. And it also talks about what sizes were what. Now you can think about this in terms of what you would make for a 1940s wardrobe. So there's, there's aprons, beach coats, blouses, bolero dresses, bridal gowns, capes, coats, college clothes has its own category, which is quite interesting since this was geared at more teenage type women. There's costumes, crochet, dolls, dresses, evening clothes, girls and children's clothes, graduation and party dresses, again, for the younger crowd. Hats, turbans, snoods, bags, berets, and gloves. House coats, house dresses, apron dresses, coat dresses, infants wear, jacket dresses and ensembles, jackets, jerkins, and waistcoats. Jumper dresses, knitting instructions, lingerie, men's wear, mother daughter, neck wear, pajamas, Red Cross official uniform, which shows that we're in World War II, robes, shirts, skirts, smocks, sportswear, suit dresses, and suits. Now, sportswear in the 1940s didn't mean sportswear like we think of it now. It was ensembles, rompers, coats, bathing suits, beach coats and capes, pinafores, play skirts, play suits, shorts, culottes, slacks, overalls, shirts, bra tops, ski suits, and a skating skirt. So it was kind of like what we think of as separates. It was like pants, shorts, things like that that were considered to be things you would wear with sports then, which is like normal clothes now. Now your size, it shows exactly like you would do today. This, the largest part of your bust, the smallest part of your waist, and the largest part of your hips. Some people today measure patterns around the, the uh, upper bust. This is not how you would measure them in the 1940s. You would go around the fullest part of your bust. Now the measurements show what the size standards were. And women's sizes were generally for a more mature figure. They would be like, almost like plus size today because you can see that it goes up to bust 52, which is somewhat unusual for this time period. But it also would be women that had a um, body with a lower bust point. Mrs. sizes were more like uh, juniors and young women today. The separate skirts obviously doesn't matter. Uh, your waist and the hip, you would use that. Girls and children's, which is all the way from an infant to a teenager and uh, boys' sizes and men's sizes. We don't have junior sizes in this, which is interesting. This front section would have the patterns of the month, so these would be the ones that were brand new in February of 1943. Uh, it shows that they were shown in Ladies' Home Journal, and Ladies' Home Journal was the fashion magazine that showcased these patterns. A lot of times, because sewing was so common, they would show made-up garments in different fashion publications, so Ladies' Home Journal was the one for these ones have some really cute jumpers and yes there's movie stars Hollywood patterns often would feature a movie star on the cover so that makes them super fun for movie buffs as well as sewing enthusiasts this is interesting because it's a crocheted blouse so it included the sewing pattern for 
a sewn version and then a crocheted version as well. That's pretty cool. And this is cute because it has the very western inspired uh, whip stitching around the edges of that, which is such a 1940s thing to do. Children's clothes, cute little sailor kind of collar. So these were all the brand new patterns that they would have and you can see the color blocking that is such a 1940s thing, a way to get around fabric restrictions. Here's a border print it looks like, or maybe just a directional print. The pockets in the front, that was a 40s thing too, pockets right on that inseam of the skirt. loose. This is super cute jerkin jacket that includes uh, the sleeves. They cut it in a different fabric. That's very make do and mend war time. Very utilitarian home front clothing from World War II. Ah, this one here. I have a very similar one. It's not quite the same. It's got those V pockets at the front, but this one buttons up the front. And the fours and jumpers. Children's clothing. Actually, I do have this one. So this is a maternity dress, which obviously looks so maternity. And this is the sewing pattern of that. So that's quite cool to be able to match them up together. Children's dresses, children's slips, very cute house dress and regular dress. House coat here with really cute pockets. And this one has a really great V pockets as an interesting way to make, to make a interest without having to use a lot of fabric. More jumpers. Dressy dresses for holiday parties. So I'm not sure when this catalog came out. It's February, but maybe they were having this on the counter in December of 42. Aha, there it is. Here's this one. Ruth Warwick, and it actually says Ruth Warwick on it. I don't know if that's actually signed by the movie star or not. It would be interesting to look up her signature. But there it is, and let's see, 1026 was originally available in size 30 inch bust to 42 inch bust, and I've got a 34. Rick Rack, very 1940s. Rick Rack. Very wartime, red, white, and blue. And then the hip swags. I've noticed a lot of these bows up the front. That must have been quite a fad for the bows. Here's this one again. Interesting, they show it twice. Great leftover 1930s styling on this one, the inset Vs. More bows. <laughs> this one's great because it's got the pockets cut on the bias and then the dress cut on the straight. And this one has double pockets, which probably were not functional. Interesting use of top stitching on this one around the pockets that are just down from the shoulder darts. More bows and more bows. And this one has interesting detailing. It looks like a bias binding in a satin, which would be really pretty. Likewise, this one's satin and matte as well. That must have been a fad. Great big button there. And an interesting color blocking on this one with black and red. 
We're into the regular dress section now. So these would be dresses that came out in prior seasons. Classic 1940s movie star dress with bows and hip swags. Matching hat with this one. More two tone. And the smaller the illustration, usually the older the sewing patterns. They feature in bigger pictures, the ones that were newer. This is great. Easy to do that to just add some strips with bows on an already existing base. More strips and bows. So that was definitely a thing of the early 40s. This one includes crochet detailing for a hat and a shoe clip. Distinctive clothes for larger women. So each of these was designed for a larger bust size. Usually uh, patterns went to a 38 or a 40 bust, sometimes 42, but these ones go above that. So this would be uh, 12, 14 to 20 and then 32 to 46. So what this means is that this pattern was drafted in a Mrs. size and that was the 14 to 20, which would be a uh, See, 14 is 32 and 20 is 38 bust and then 32 to 46 that would be the women's sizing so it would be redrafted from a missus to women's size and then go from 32 inch bust to 46 so when you see the uh, the numbers like 14 to 20 that's the missus 32 to 46 being the actual bust measure that's the women's sizing so these were available in women's sizing this one is also misses and women's. This goes to 44. This one to 46 and great pockets on that one. And these are the pattern numbers if you need want to like write these down to save. This says it's a classic shirt waist dress and this goes to 46 bust. This one to 44 and this one to 46. So this section would all be for sizes over 42 bust, which is specifically for women. Great pantsuit here. And this would go to a 44 bust. This one is great with the bows and the detailing. This one was 32 to 44, pattern number 93. Beautiful shirtwaist dresses. Great hat.
this section would be college clothes and sports clothes, as well as hats and bags. So these are what the younger woman would wear when she was going to go to college. There's that crocheted blouse again, and this is a really cute pantsuit. I think I've got this somewhere. I don't know that it's in my stash over here, though. And this is Marjorie Woodsworth from Hal Roach Star. Hal Roach being the movie studio. Favorite campus classics. Interesting that the quilted jacket was in fashion. Great big pockets on those skirts. And here is Barbara Britton and Jinx Falconbert. Includes the knit or crocheted vest. I suspect somebody used this for all of their cooking because look up in the corner. This one says pies and then prior one it said frostings. So someone was sticking all of their different recipes in here. This one has a knitted sweater included with cables. Ah, my friend has this one. She has this little snow pant set. That's cute. Pattern to look out for. Look at that. The jumper with the pockets. I totally need that pattern. There's beach capes up here. Pinafore with a ridiculous hat. <laughs> Great shorts and pants. These are all my favorite kind of clothes. And swimsuits, beach coats, and swimsuits, and dresses, and pinafores, all the fun stuff. Now we're in the suits and the coats. Hang on, there's evening dresses coming, I know. Different hats. I've never even seen some of these patterns. Here's a snood. And I've been, I've been collecting patterns for like 15 years and I've never even seen some of these. same strap detailing but with a bias that has like a plaid that's really cute cool arts I'm pretty sure I've made this at some point Jumper dresses, culottes again. I love this bib front. That's really, really clever. With the culottes. Wow, so that looks like an earlier one. That could be late 30s. Beach coats. And here we go into the evening clothes. Evening skirt glamour. Make evening dresses from one skirt and several blouses. As shown in Glamour magazine. So I guess they also showed Hollywood patterns. Okay, so evening bridal and graduation. This is so classic, 40s here, with the insets and the bows. This one has scallops, really cute. These are wardrobe editions, so this would be stuff that you could use in war work, 
There's a Red Cross worker uniform, an informal fill-in uniform, and then these are for cooking to serve others. So this would be Red Cross volunteer special service for administration, staff assistant production, braille, canteen, home service, hospital recreation, and paid to staff worker except hospital workers. 823 is not in regular stock, but can be had on special order. So 823 is this one that has these caps in it. So this one here with the caps is a special order pattern. This one would be available at the pattern counter. Now we're into the lingerie. So bed jackets, nightgowns, house coats, pajamas. I have this one. Here's that one. The pajamas to go with it. So mine is a 34 inch bust. This one came in sizes 12 to 20 and sizes 30 to 38 bust. For pajamas and slips. House coats. I have this one. And I've made this one. This one makes up really cute. So that's this one right here. This is 1009, mine is a 34 inch bust, and it went from 14 to 20, and then from Here's that same pajama pattern I have, and apparently there's a girl's version as well. Now these ones are all for maternity wear. So they would be smocks, dresses that would expand in the waistline. These are suggestions for an attractive Christmas gift, so I can guess that this was out in December of 42. These are for like the Shirley Temple kind of doll. And um, yeah, mother-daughter pajamas, so I guess that still was a thing in the 1940s. And then these are all kids' clothes. Mother-daughter fashions again. I love mother-daughter ones. I need to make my girl and I matching pinafores. That's darling. see how nautical inspired everything was with the war going on. All these darling sailor dresses and then this one has the lace up on the skirt and on the bust. Actually that's a buttons on the skirt. It's just so cute. Interesting, some of these are left over from the late 1930s. I know I've seen this one. Another darling sailor one. I actually have this one tucked away somewhere. Maybe I need to make it for my little girl. And we're to the men. Men's pajamas. Ah. And boys. And someone's child got to this. With a crayon. Thank you, child. That's it, there's the index. This is all the pattern numbers. If you're curious, the pattern numbers in 1943 went from 430 to 1057. So quite a long range. Some of these are all the way from the late 1930s, uh, early 1940s, and then up until 1942. Thank you so much for taking a peek into the past with me what it would be like to look at a pattern catalog in 1943. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my other ones. I really hope you enjoy this. If you like fashion history, I've got a good amount of stuff. And if you like sewing, I have videos for you too. Get down, party.